What up, what up, what up? Welcome to No Life Digital Podcast. So we're just going to be dropping a tech portion of the show today. Uh, no gaming portion. There's something wrong with my mouth. I have like this like thing hanging off of my gums where my wisdom tooth is, and it's extremely painful to do anything. Um, so there was a bunch of tech news, especially about the MacBook. So we figured we'd talk about that. There's not much gaming news. Doobie's still going through Octopath Traveler. So hopefully when he finishes that, we'll come back with you with some tech news. But um, So you'll have this video, you'll have this podcast, and then you should have a, uh, another video this week that I'm going to be releasing. And hopefully you will have my new podcast, which I've been trying to release for the past five months now, and I just haven't done it yet. Um, but it's a podcast that that I just have been doing for my own my own personal project and I will be uploading it to this this um this channel as well uh the podcast is more it's not really tech related but it is it's not really gaming related but it is and it's more in line with sort of I don't want to say self-help because I don't really like self-help stuff it's more of like just learning to do things and kind of talking about stuff like that there's a lot of health involved there's a lot of recovery involved uh there is tech there is gaming but it's not really the focus but you'll see hopefully that gets released this week depending on the state of my mouth um and then uh yeah so just be on the lookout on the website nolife.digital head over to the link right over here so if you go to the website you can see it podcast right up in the top thing you just click it all of our podcasts are uploaded to our network you can also subscribe on itunes android google play radio stitcher podbean all those good ones um and if you just want to listen to it on the website it's right here as well so uh, make it really easy for you to get into our content and just you know bookmark the website because we're constantly um putting up articles and videos and stuff especially more so nowadays now that we have a little bit more time to focus on it and um, I want to do more reviews, and I also, and I also want to, um, kind of do articles in a little bit of a different manner, more like, more of more of like an opinion piece, more so than just reviewing something or breaking news on something, just because we don't have the inside scoop, so we're not going to be able to be the first ones to get you these stories, these breaking stories, unless we, unless we could some way. Uh, but in the case that we can't, which is most of the time, maybe we'll just put our opinion or our thoughts into the article rather than just kind of give you the straight up facts. Uh, cause that's something that we can provide. That's something that we can provide a value that others can't, you know, our point of view on things. All right. Anyways, it's just me and Jerry today. What's up, Jerry, my guy. Yo, how's it going? Just been working on Red Wings content actually. Really? Yeah. Cause I got I got the hockey bug again, basically. Oh shit! I had the hockey bug for a while again. When's the new NHL coming out, by the way? Is it out uh, yet? The video game or yeah. the? Oh, I don't know. Oh man, I honestly don't, don't know. The NHL games have been shit. Really, I love them, dude. dude. Well, I'm addicted to them. I used to be. I haven't played in a while. Yeah, like they they've been getting worse and worse. Well, it's more just like there's there's definite bugs in them where like you can trap people in the corner and just it's like it'll it like physics just don't exist <laughs> um but like they haven't i mean it's it's not like madden madden's of course the golden franchise so all mm. of this all the new stuff goes to madden and like the only things that have really been added to nhl have been the mud mode yeah it's really nothing new on nhl it yeah. is fun though i was never a hockey guy and i didn't start following hockey I mean, I still don't really follow it, but I know a lot more about it because of NHL. You know what I mean? Like, I know how it plays. Are, like, I can watch hockey now and watch how plays get set up and stuff like that, which is which is always cool about video games like that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I've just gotten completely back into hockey. <laughs> Dude, are you going to put up on the channel? Um, I've been, putting, I've been working on, like, a different channel because I wasn't sure how related it would be. Yeah, so I'm, deba- I'm debating. So if anyone listening wants to hear hockey content, particularly <laughs> mostly about the Red Wings, <laughs> that's let pretty me know. niche, pretty niche market. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about doing like UFC or, like, stuff just even too. some more, like just some more culture sports stuff. Like I, I would definitely put. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, I would definitely put more like Deadspin esque 
Even right. though I'm not a big fan of Deadspin, like that kind of, if it's more of a general hockey content, yeah, I'd probably put it here. But like, I mean, right now I'm working on in like five, you know, watching five games of someone who was drafted by a specific team, hmm. like five games of a player and doing kind of like a scouting report. And like, that's not, yeah, no one cares about that unless you're in that niche. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was thinking of kind of putting like UFC stuff on here, and I, it does seem a little bit out of place, but I think, I don't know, we kind of, it's kind of just like this morphing thing that we've, we've kind of created. So maybe it'll work. I don't know. Yeah, I know a lot of people well, like no, sports. Like I th- so, yeah, I think I think like just general sports stuff would totally be acceptable. Yeah, maybe we should do more of that, man. That would be fun. Ah, right, we'll think about it. Seven sports show. Um. Have you seen Secession on HBO? No. All right. So it, it is created by – how do you spell Secession? Uh, here we go. So it's created by – where is it? I need to find the I, IMDB on it. Uh, some pretty big names. I've been watching it. I'm all caught up. Um, where do you oh, – dude, IMDB is such a mess of a website. It's the worst looking website ever. Um, so it's it's basically produced by like Will Ferrell's team, not him himself, but like his team, like wh- whoever's behind that team. I'm not exactly sure. And it's a show about this old guy, and he's a media conglomerate, and he's basically setting up today's Sinclair Broadcasting Group, and his kids are essentially trying to take his position. And okay. it is such a fucking great show. It's so funny. The The lead character is, uh, what's his name? Let me see if I can find his, his real name. Uh, that's not him. Uh, uh, that's not him either. Where is he? Jeremy Strong. Right, so it's it's led by Jeremy Strong, who plays Kendall Roy. Dude, actually, you've always really liked that guy. So yeah, now I'm definitely more. Yeah, interested. he's surprisingly really good in this show. He plays like this. He plays like the son that's next in line to become the CEO, and his dad's okay. like getting dementia and he's going crazy. And his dad's a piece of shit. He's a huge asshole. So he has three kids. Uh, Kendall is the the oldest son. He's next in line, and he fucks with him so hard. And he plays, Jeremy Strong plays such a good role in, like, being, like, a hard CEO, but also, like, a dumbass CEO. You know what I mean? Like, just trying to figure out his way. He does it perfectly. Then there's uh, Roman, which is the younger brother, and he's always, like, the younger brother. You know what I mean? And he plays a fucking amazing role as well as, like, this scumbag cokehead that's just, he's just a big piece of shit, but more in, like, an endearing way. And then there's the sister, uh, what's her name? I forget her her exact name there's kendall there's roman and oh shiv so sarah snook plays shiv and she's like this you know this goody two shoes and she's into politics and stuff and then there's logan which is the dad logan roy and it's just this dysfunctional family but the show like the nuances of the show are fucking amazing and if you like shows like um like the newsroom if you like shows if you like shows like like what what um uh uh, Aaron Sorkin kind of produces, then you'd fucking love this show because it's written really well. It's super funny, and I highly, highly recommend it. I think they're on episode seven now, so there's a good amount of show left so you can catch up um, and get back into it before the season ends. I'm not exactly sure how many episodes. I'm assuming 12. It looks like 10. 10 episodes. Highly, yep. highly recommend it. It's a great show. It's not hard to get into. It's funny, and the acting is just wonderful. So HBO has been really surprising me. Just like everything they put out is so good. And then there's a new show uh, that just came out called Sharp Objects. Sharp Objects with, um, what's her name? Uh, Amy Adams as the the lead. And this is like giving me like um, true detective vibes. Like it's a murder mystery show. And she plays like this alcoholic journalist trying to figure out what's going on in this murder that's happened in her hometown. Awesome. Also an excellent show. But that show's pretty early in. I think we're on the third episode now. So I'm not exactly sure where it's going, but it's been pretty good so far. So there's two awesome shows for you to check out. And then, of course, the next one we're going to talk about, which is Who is America by Sasha Baron Cohen. Uh, And have you seen, like, the full episodes? 
No, not yet. I've been meeting. I'm honestly both of these sound good, so I'll probably could check out both of these. Yeah, definitely but check out Secession for sure. I've literally, I've just been watching hockey reruns. <laughs> <laughs> Take a break from the hockey, watch Secession, and then of course watch Who Is America because it's actually, it's so stupid, but it's also I mean, so terrifying at the same time. Yeah, I'm 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 excited to watch that one, but I might wait till it's finished so I can just binge it. To be honest, because like I've always, I've always been a big Sasha Baron Cohen fan. Yeah, like most too. of his work, I've been like, okay, this is this is funny. Yeah, so I'm definitely interested in it. Yeah, and they dress him up pretty fucking well too. Like some of his characters, you just wouldn't be able to tell it's him. Um, and it it's a show. I don't know. It's a show that I feel like you're gonna have to that you should watch as it goes on. Cause I guarantee you more stories are going to break from it. Like when we heard about the gun control one with the NRA and then this one with the Senator, um, there's just going to be more cause he really pushes the boundaries on this show, but it's also like, so it's like his humor. So like, it like it's so stupid at times that you're just like, you can't believe that these people are falling for this shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. But then yeah. again, I don't know. And it's 2018. So who the fuck knows, man? It's I crazy. mean, it. It's one of those things where it's like it. it how, how stupid you gotta be to not like, I don't know. I was, I was talking about this in the the early show where it's like, at this point too, it's not like the world doesn't know who Sasha Baron Cohen is. Yeah. Like it's it's not like he's in his Ali G days. You know what I mean? When he was a nobody, or like even some of the earlier movies or anything like that. It's most people kind of have an idea who he is. Yeah. I, I I mean, I guess that's just a testament to his, his acting because he was able to fool Bernie, not really fool him, but I mean, he didn't know who he was. And then all of the Republican congressmen and senators, (laughs) when they were doing the NRA thing, I mean, he was, he was able to get him to say some crazy shit. And I can only imagine what else he's going to get into. Like, this is the first two episodes, so it's just going to get crazier. But uh, it's a great, it's just a great show. It's great to see him that he, it's great to see him back, like, doing this show. Yeah, I mean, if you get um, a state representative to uh, do the thing, say the things that he said. Yeah. Okay. Because, I mean, like, it's, it's one of those things, too, where, like, that's what's been interesting from like the snippets I have seen where it's just like he's 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 got to be choosing the right people well, in some ways too where it's just like cuz there's he's definitely trying to goad people into being ridiculous like mm-hmm. that is the basis of the show yeah but he's definitely finding the people who are totally on board to just say whatever the hell they want yeah yeah, he knows his he he knows what he's doing. <laughs> Pretty yeah. much, he knows what he's doing. Cause like he's he's definitely finding the people. Like, there's only so much a defense of like, well, they were telling me to say it. It's like, well, he's making sure to find the people who are dumb enough that they'll actually say the crap instead of just being like, why the fuck would I do that? Yeah. <laughs> and he he like he 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 does get some people who are like. Like, what do you want me to do? Like, what did you just say to me? But they still, like, they just still carry on. Like, they take him seriously. And I guess that's the power of having a camera crew. Um, But, I mean, I just can't wait to see what else he gets into. So I can't wait to see the Sarah Palin episode. It's going to get good. (laughs) It's going to get good. Well, yeah, that's, like, the craziest part, too, where it's just, like, he's just, it's all, it's all elected officials. Mm-hmm. Where it's just like, even during like taping this, like this had to have taken time to tape. Like right. no one, no one's passed a memo, like, exactly. like throughout the Senate halls or like Congress halls. You know, no one was like, "Hey, dude, I had this really weird deep guy come up and talk to me to say some bunch of racist shit." Like, did this happen to you? Or how about like I had this weird guy come up, this Israeli ex officer come up to me and tell me to promote kinder guardians and kinder grenaders. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like it's it's insane 
and they don't know until this show gets released and that's when you see all the tweets and all the things oh he got me it's just like yeah dude he got you because you're a fucking idiot there's just no buffer there it's crazy it is terrifying like the the one with the nra is probably the most terrifying so far and that's episode one (laughs) i can't imagine where it goes so highly recommend it it's funny like yeah some of some of it's and like some of it's just hilarious too because like some of it he's there's i mean okay the worst parts that are getting the most uh press coverage and things like that definitely got goaded into it but if you go through like a lot of the other stuff like he's finding the people where like you don't really have to go to him too much right like like with the second one it's just like no, he just brought up a burka ban, and then the guy just started spouting a bunch of bullshit about it. And it's just like, that wasn't even goaded. No, no, yeah, you're exactly <laughs> like, right. It doesn't take him much. He so kind of just lets him do his thing. He's finding uh, people to make a good show. Yeah. And he doesn't, like, if you're wearing, like, oh, he only makes fun of conservatives, or he only makes fun of liberals. He makes fun of both sides. Pretty hardcore. Yeah. No, he's going. He's going after everybody. Yeah, which is great. You always want to see that with with him. <laughs> he's so funny. All right, moving on. Steam got a little update. It looks like they're trying to head after Discord here. Um, you can well, see here on the video. Yeah, Steam. Steam got a uh, friends. Like its friends list got updated. Steam itself, it doesn't look like much has really changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The friends list. But it's mostly the friends list is trying to like be cool and fancy we'll see if it works i mean steam like your steam friends list has always been great because you can see what people are playing and like if they're playing the same game you can just invite them yeah but like i still don't because of that i don't see my steam friends list being as nice as discord yeah and that's more just because like for discord i have to invite you if there's my, a, Steam, my Steam list is just like, yeah, if I've played like three Counter Strike matches with you, I'm gonna add you in case we play like want to play sometime. Yeah. But real talk, I don't I don't want to talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> No, you're absolutely right. Like my my Steam's list is like filled with people I've I've never even played with. I might have played one game with them, I don't even remember who they are. Right. So now do I want to be like in a Discord chat with them all the time? Yeah, not really. Yeah. But does Discord have like a Steam overlay? Yeah. Well, uh, for most things. That's what I thought. Because that's that's what's cool about Steam too is how it's integrated into all the games. So you just pop it up, boom, you can get into it, and now it's kind of native. So it is it is nice to see that they're they're going after it. about time. It yeah, looks cool. just like I mean, Discord too, which I find interesting. I mean, if for when I do use it, it looks it it definitely looks like it has some nice improvements. Mm-hmm. But like. It's the same thing that Blizzard's trying to do. They're trying to do the same thing with their communities feature where they're trying to make a Discord type feature since everyone, I mean, everyone's gone to Discord. Mm -hmm. And like, it's, they're all just kind of stop gaps because like Discord already established itself as being very good. And then all of them are like, trying to be discord light then still not just not making as good of a product so no one's gonna like once you're already in discord it's not like yep i'm gonna leave discord for my steam list or wow community right yeah i don't i don't it is nice for like you know you can add group chats like if you have like a five-man squad or something cool you can make a group chat for while you're playing and stuff like that that's great yeah, I mean, it literally looks exactly like Discord. Like, the way you set up the voice channels and the text channels and all that is all the same. Um, It's just like you said, it's just, you know, I don't really use my Steam chat often. It's really just a quick, hey, hop in, boom, and then you move over to Discord. Yeah, and like, uh, yeah, Blizzard's been doing the same thing recently where they've been trying to bring it into their games since they made a like communities discord type thing for their launcher and it's like some people use it but like it's it's a little bit it's it's good for what it is it's like cool if i want to talk about wow here's some people talking about wow but that's about it Mm. 
And I can see the same thing possibly going for this, where it's like, cool, there might be a neat Total War community, because God knows Steam communities was always trash. But like, cool, you could have like a Total War fake Discord channel that could be cool to pop in every now and then, but like, I don't see myself using it all the time. Well, if anything, it'll make Discord better. You know what I mean? Hopefully. Because it's, I still think Discord needs a little bit, a little bit of a tweaks here and there, but they're getting there. All right, and you want to talk about the Windows charger? Oh yeah, dude, they totally failed on their charger. So um, I remember they released like a. Oh, the dongle bullshit. Yeah, is that what well, you're talking that, about? That, no, dude, that even, I'm not fucking paying eighty dollars for one USB C port. <laughs> Fuck off. That was already stupid as hell. But no, their base charger, it's got like a shelf life of like six months before it breaks. And why is that? I don't fucking know. So I, who, ha, who found this out? People's, people's chargers are breaking now? Yeah, mine's broken. Oh, like almost, broke and already? I looked it, looked it up and it's just like, yeah, no, they apparently just, a lot of people just die after like six months, <sighs> three months. That's a shame. Like they just randomly die, kind of like old mag, like the old mag series chargers, where you just like, it's not even like the cable's broken or anything. It's just like, no, it just doesn't work. So at all, do you know what part works or what part has broken? Like, is it the? Because no. I see here, there's a, you can buy the Microsoft Surface 65 watt power supply, and then there's a Surface Book power supply unit. Yeah, I have no idea. I, the, I ordered... Oh, uh, one's 100 bucks, one's 80 bucks. Yeah, I ordered some new third-party parts, and, you know, I'll test it. But, like... Yeah. That, okay, sure, dude. That's I've the part that it, you... That, for, like, three or four months. That's the part of reason why, like, proprietary chargers are, are terrible. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm fine. Honest, like, it's, it's cool because there's enough cheap Chinese crap in the world that I'm fine with it, but like yeah, but who knows how long those last. Oh I don't care. I'm only, I'm only paid twenty bucks for it. Mm -hmm. So if, Yeah, but that's still if, it's if still it lasts sucks, for though. a while. Oh no it does, but it's like I'd rather pay twenty dollars and have it break than the hundred dollar cable you're supposed to have for it breaking in three months. That's yeah. fucking ridiculous. Yeah it's it still sucks though. I mean, that's one of the reasons why, like I said, the proprietary charges, it's like you're, you're locked into that. No, that's why everything, that should, everything should be USB-C. Yeah. Really should. Can we just, like, make this happen already? Dude, there's still laptops coming out that have, like, one USB-C port on it. 2018 brand new laptops. And yeah. everyone's like, you know, everyone goes on Apple, like, oh, they only have USB-C. And that might not be the right answer, too. But, dude... I fucking love Thunderbolt 3, dude. It's so much better. It's such a great port. And you have four of them. You know, just pay, just start putting them on everything. There's no reason to have any other port except USB-C. Make it Thunderbolt 3 yeah. if you can. That's it. You know? And then everyone's happy. We'll all move on. And you can charge everything with it. Yeah. Like, no, so you, as someone so who's does had... Does your service have USB-C at all? No. That's right. The... The Surface Laptop, right? It's only USB-A? Yeah. Yep. And you can't charge through there at all? Nope. Oof. It's rough. I mean, it's a great laptop, but uh, yeah, that's just fucking ridiculous. Yeah. That their chargers break that easily. But it's one of those things where it's like, I just want USB-C on everything. I'm totally in that camp because, I mean, I've had a Google Pixel for two years at this point. Yeah. And like, yeah, just put USB-C on everything. It's so much faster. It's fantastic. It's so great. I can fully charge my phone still in like 20 minutes. Yeah. It's phenomenal. Like, yeah. Just put it on everything. Get it over with. Yeah. Make it a universal universal standard. Cool. I agree. All right. And then we want to talk about the Zuckerberg interview, which if you haven't heard, there's a podcast called Recode, and they interviewed, what's the well, girl's name? Kara Swisher. Yeah, Recode Decode? Is that what you're thinking of? Because the website, the whole media site is Recode. 
Yeah, Recode Decode is the podcast. Hosted by Kara Swisher. And she interviews a Zuckerberg and, like, doesn't go soft on him. Like, she really... No, she's always done great at... I mean, there's a reason why she's been in the tech industry and, like, held in high standards for journalism for, like, 20 years. Yeah, it's great. It's very illuminating, the podcast. Because... I mean, we were talking before, but you really like when he talks to her, you really get a sense for a few things. One being that he's not a bad guy. Like there's a lot of people who hate on Facebook. They think it's the devil. But these are people that are normally uninformed about tech. They're uninformed about Silicon Valley. They're uninformed about just they're, they're generally older people who sort of stumble into technology. Right. They just don't know too much. Um, but when you hear the way she talks to him and the way he kind of, like, he's very matter of fact with her, which I found interesting because like in the Senate hearing, he was very cautious and very robotic, but it makes sense to be like that in that sort of style. And then thank God he did this interview because then I, when I heard it, I was like, all right, he's, he's got a lot on his plate. Like Facebook was not meant to be this gigantic conglomerate sort of population book you know and it just billion spawned. plus people yeah it's insane like that's what i always tell like because i i get that and that's what i try to get i get into arguments sometimes where it's like i don't really want to defend them or like really the dude but it's like you're you're trying to ask for immediate fix on a thing that has a two mil, two billion billion like person database yeah active that's how long that takes <laughs> like you can't you can't do any types of quick fixes to that no and that, and reading um that other book um about silicon valley that just came out facebook it was always the the company that they would just constantly put out things like on their website they would just be like okay now we have photos okay now we have the news feed okay now we have this like they don't really sit and they fully test their things and they do a beta run like they were just release it and that was part of the culture there at facebook and it's part of the reason why it's grown so quickly but it's like you can't when you have that many people there's really you can't really do that anymore you know and then he's trying to figure out these weird ways to to deal with all these political constraints that he's in uh there was a there was a portion of the show that was dedicated to like the uh, myanmar situation where you know, she was asking him, like, hey, do you feel personally responsible for the deaths that happened over in Myanmar? And it was just a really illuminating interview. And I highly, highly recommend you check it out, especially if you're someone who thinks, like, Facebook is the devil and, you know, you think that they're listening to your conversations. It's not the case, you know. They're just really good at what they do. And I don't think Zuckerberg is ever going to step down from his position as CEO. I really don't know how they're – I don't know how that's going to – how he's going to be able to stay CEO, but I don't think he's going to willingly step down because he really does care for it in a weird way. Like he wants it to be used for good. He wants Facebook, Facebook to be like a, a, a platform that is, he wants it to be Facebook that we all knew and loved when it first dropped. And he's just going to spend his entire life trying to get it back there. I don't know if it's possible, especially when you have the entire world population on it. But uh, it's interesting to see him try, and that's, for sh that's, that's what I find interesting. So go check out the interview because she, she really does do a great job of talking with him. I mean, there's, just, there's nothing, no stone unturned in this interview. Really, really cool. How long is it, too? About an hour and a half long. So you got a nice little podcast to check out. We're just dropping mad content for you guys. Good-ass content for you to check out. And we got Ajit Pai finalizing his vote to limit FCC reviews of customer complaints. So, um, what were you saying about this? Well, apparently, uh, voted three to one to stop reviewing inf informal consumer complaints about telecom companies. To get an FFC FCC review of a company's bad behavior, a consumer will have to file a formal complaint, which costs $225. To the F FCC. Yeah. 
So uh, if you have a problem with your shitty Comcast looking at you, uh, ISP, uh, FCC won't even look at it unless you pay that money now. Mm. Now, I want to know. I want to know if they are even looking at them. (laughs) Probably not. Well, no, they weren't. That's why they're like, oh, we'll change this. So we'll only look at the ones that uh, get paid. Now, I'm wondering if they actually have to read them now that you're paying. I mean, that's the question. Will they actually? That's what I'm saying. I think that's the question. Because I I actually don't mind this if they have to read them. If you spend the money and they have to read them and they have to respond to you, then I really don't mind it that bad. Because if you're just going to just send them, I mean, I don't, I don't read half of the fucking complaints that I get. You know what I mean? Yeah. So but, I, like it, but you're also not a government agency. True. That's very true. <laughs> like, that's, that's, very that's true. the part where it's like a little bit of fear where it's just like, wait, so, but you're also not a, you know, federal government agency where this is like their sole reason for existing. Yeah. Oh my God. It's kind of ridiculous, man. I think the the quote from the one who voted no was, uh, this is bonkers. No one should be asked to pay $225 for this agency to do its job. Yeah. No one should see this agency close its doors to everyday consumers looking for assistance in a marketplace that can be bewildering to navigate. There are so many people who think Washington is not listening to them and that the rules at agencies like this one are rigged against them. And today's decision only proves that point. Yeah, that's a fucking nice little quote there. That's the truth right there. But that's a little bit insane. It's fucked up. Well. Thanks, Ajipai. We need to get uh, Sasha Baron Cohen to fucking go interview Ajipai. No, he actually knows who he is. Dude, he'd probably all be up for it, actually. He'd he- probably jump on and try to make it into another shitty meme video. <laughs> oh, true. <laughs> To show that he's hip with the kids. Moving on to Fujifilm's XF10 is a small compact camera with a big old sensor. I haven't seen I, this. I thought this looked interesting, so I wanted to hear your opinions on this. All right, what we got here? The XF10 fixed lens compact camera that will serve as a successor to the X70. Um, it's got a 28 millimeter equivalent f2.8 lens with a large APS-C sensor. In a small pocketable body. Okay, so it's a it's a fixed twenty eight millimeter lens. Right. No, this is this is like um an RX, you know, a small form factor. This is not a DSLR or anything like that. Yeah. XF ten ups the resolution to twenty four megapixels and it's capable of four K video, albeit only at fifteen frames per yeah. second. See, they gotta stop doing that. Uh-huh. Don't say it's got four K video if it doesn't have fifteen frames per second. <laughs> yeah. They did that with the uh, the Canon M fifty. Well, don't also, don't that's, fucking say it has 4K video then, because it doesn't. That's not I mean, video. It's like every action cam, like on the low end, who's like, yeah, we do, we do 4K at 20. <laughs> no. On an action cam. <laughs> like, on an action. So, you, like, the thing is supposed to go fast. That is insane. But, hey, we got 4K. That's ridiculous. Um, But 24 megapixels is nice. There's still a touch screen. XF10 also now has a focus point selection joystick as seen on other Fujifilm cameras. The weight has been cut down. XF10 isn't quite a straight up upgrade to the XS70, however, and the owners of the older camera may miss several features on the newer model. There's no tilt screen, flash hot shoe, or aperture ring on the F- XF10, and the control scheme is entirely different. Uh, uses a PASM dial rather than dedicated controls. All right. Um... There's a square mode now for Instagram, which which I think is pretty cool. Uh, and it's five hundred bucks. Five hundred bucks. When you're in that five hundred dollar range, it's tough. If you're looking for, because essentially what you're looking at now is like, how much better is this camera than my phone's camera? It's true. It's an, but it's also like, well, I mean, it's gonna be better because it's that APS-C sensor. Oh, it's gonna be. It's gonna look better for sure. It's yeah. gonna look. But how much better is it? Is it worth? To, is it worth not just purchasing, but holding on to an extra tiny camera um, for five hundred bucks? In my opinion, I don't know. I'd have to see some. I'd have to see some images. If it had four K video at twenty four frames, then I'd say yes. Yeah, it's, it's definitely worth it. But because there's no four K, 
it's kind of hard because you can get I mean let's look at let's look at the price of the RX 100 mark 4 so for a couple hundred bucks more you basically get the the RX 100 mark 4 by Sony which has a zoom lens on it it's just as small it's probably smaller than this one um, you also get a flip up screen you get the 4k at 24 to 30 frames I mean you get a lot more camera that you'd want to carry around this one if you're just doing photos um, I mean even at 28 millimeter equivalent with an f2.8 on APS-C your bokeh is really not going to be that good unless you're really got the background really far away so you're still I mean it's it'll look sharper than your phone's camera but it's not going to look miles miles better it's not going to look like a it's not going to look like anything above its price class what size sensor does the rx 100 use though i think it's a one inch sensor yeah it, it, the APS-C is like three times the size of a one inch sensor yeah it's a lot bigger so that's that's the calling card of this camera is what i'm trying to say yeah it's a lot bigger it's just kind of the only reason i that it's kind of limited is because that's a really wide angle and when you have a wide angle yeah. like that, it kind of it's hard to get that nice bokeh that you're that you're gonna want to look for. Like if you're just oh, no, taking, you just use the square Instagram mode. <laughs> but Fuji does have really nice color. I mean, I would say Fuji has the best color. So if you're looking, if you're someone who just wants to snap some pictures, a wide angle picture, like you're doing street photography, or you're someone who takes pictures of a lot of product, like shoes or something for Instagram, then this would be a badass little Instagram camera. Oh. This, that's, that's what, I, well, that's what I was thinking, especially cause like you got, um, you have the bigger sensor, this screamed, okay, here's your budget, uh, Instagram TV camera. Yeah. If like it had for if, people, for pe if people care about that. Yeah. If it had a flip out screen though. That f I mean, yeah, that's true. But like, even without it, it's one of those, like, it's probably better than everything else for $500. Yeah. But at that point I'd say, if you want to do video, Save a couple extra hundred bucks. Go with the Sony. Or you can go with the, the Canon, but that's only 1080p. Um, but the Sony RX4 or the RX5, whichever one you can afford. Once you get up to the 5 and the 6, you're starting to get to the $1,000 territory. So you can go with the RX4 or RX3. They still sell those. Um, but that yeah, you're going to want that flip-out camera for the, for the video. But if you're doing photo and you want a budget option, this could be... A, like I said, Fuji's color is just unrivaled. And... and let's see like if we look at their let's look at fuji's next camera in line like the next price jump um give me one second here i love their website too it's just so easy uh so it would be the xf the x100f right that would be their next one in line that's a that's a cmos camera it's got that hybrid viewfinder yeah and that's a 1200 hundred dollar camera so if you wanted that Fuji color, that beautiful, gorgeous Fuji Velvia color, at five hundred bucks, that's pretty appealing. That's pretty appealing. But that's only if you want their if you want that Fuji color, and um, you're doing photo. I wouldn't. If you're doing any sort of video, I would skip it. Or any sort of I should say, nah. Fuji's really just not that good with video. Skip it for video. Yeah. Basically, just get it if you want, like, a really nice, pocketable Instagram camera. Because, real talk, it's the actual photo quality is kind of gorgeous for 500 bucks. Oh, yeah. I Like I said, dude, like, you know, there's people who spend money on LUTs to make their cameras look like Fuji, you know? Yeah. So, if you can get it right out of the camera and then it has this Bluetooth option, you just send it right over to your phone. You could take pictures in one one by one aspect ratio. I mean, you got a fucking badass little Instagram camera. Well, honestly, that's uh, that's almost become cooler to me. Is actually like if you have a strong Bluetooth connection, like if you have a good Bluetooth app, that's become more compelling to me than yeah. flip out like flip out camera. If I can see a live feed on my phone, that's actually been becoming more. That's be that's cooler to me and somewhat almost more useful than having a flip down screen. Well. They, but that's also that's still a couple of years out, right? Like, like being done well, right? They they all kind of have it, but they all kind of suck, right? You so know? like that's I don't know how Fuji's is. I've never used that on a Fuji. Yeah, Could like that's I want. 
I want that to like be a lot cooler because I think that me too. That's like that's gonna be a big game changer. Yeah, for sure. If you can just like like the way that Sony does it, but the way they they all do it, you have to get an app for it. And then you have to, yeah. at least for iPhone, you have to download a profile on your phone. Then you have to connect to the camera through the Wi-Fi. You have to put in the password, the SSID, or you take a picture of the little QR reader on it. And then it starts to connect, which takes a little bit. And then it, you have it on your phone. It's a little laggy. Uh, there's, It's limited in its features. It doesn't do everything the camera does. And that's right. pretty much all of them Like that, that are like yeah. that. I don't know about Fuji, but the way that I kind of get around it is... Sony cameras have NFC on the side. So you could just take your phone and kind of just touch it and it'll just transfer the photos over to it. Right. But only only the RX series has a flip-up camera, the flip-up screen. The other, the higher-end ones, none of them flip up, which sucks. Right. Which, like, that's that's why that, that interests me a lot because, like, I want... I think you could do some really cool things once that technology is actually really fleshed out. Yeah. I mean, if this had a flip-up screen... If it did 4K at 24 frames, at least, and it was around 600, 700 bucks, and you had the Fuji Color, and it had a good Bluetooth app, I would have no issue recommending it to anyone. I would have it myself. That's like a killer. Everyone wants that killer Instagram video sort of hybrid camera where you could just flip it up, turn it on, and just go and just send it right to your phone to upload to social media. But none of them have done it well. That market's still wide open. And if Fuji does it, I guarantee you people are going to be hype just because everyone wants Fuji color. It's so in right now. That muted hipster look is super in. Fuji, let's go. They just released their, not just, but a few months ago, they just released their fucking medium format camera too, which is crazy. Oh, man, I want one so bad. So expensive. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I've been, I've been getting interested in low-end budget cameras again. Yeah, it's a tough market. Cause but it's also it's it's fun because there's <clears throat> definitely there's definitely some that like outshine more than others. Cause like that was actually oh god, like eight years ago or so, like when Panasonic brought out their little Lumex series. Mm -hmm. Dude, I love those cameras. So I've always had a I've always had a soft a soft spot for like very small, compact, high quality cameras. Yeah, and that like five hundred to eight hundred dollar price range. Yeah, I have two high end DSLRs from Sony. I have three, with considering the A sixty three hundred, and I still bought a Sony RX one hundred Mark V because I that form factor, that tiny little form factor, the flip up screen, the four K video. It's so I use that probably more than I use my other cameras, just because when you want to just do some quick video, but you want it to look good, you don't want it to yeah. look like a phone. Uh, yeah. you want that image stabilization. You want that that microphone. Like it's just they're awesome. Yeah. Well, None like, of them I mean, are perfect though, which sucks. There's not true. a killer out there yet. It's true because like I mean, but the, well, that's what always got me interested in it because it was one of those things where it's like way back in the day. Like yeah, I had, I had a what two thousand dollar DSLR, and my most used camera was still a little like one of those little piece of shit panasonic lumexes with the leica lens mm -hmm. because it was the quality was by far good enough and it's like cool i can put this in my pocket it's always with me yeah and then fucking casey neistat with the fucking canon g7x like uh little 1080p video camera thing with the flip up screen i mean i think that was like the best selling camera at the time it was just so dope to have it and that was when camera phones weren't really that good so you had a really nice portable running gun camera it's definitely an awesome market for sure i'm wait, you know i'm waiting for that i'm waiting for the one that does it all especially like what you said with like an awesome bluetooth app that would be amazing yeah that's the only thing i really want is if i can, can if i can pair with my phone and see that like with as minimal latency as possible mm -hmm. that's the that's a huge selling point that'd be so sick because you can do so much cooler stuff with that yeah and you i'm surprised that they haven't like dedicated more money in that department because it's so i mean it's awesome if you can do that i mean i, mean, I, I use it a lot and, and it sucks <laughs> you know what i mean yeah imagine if it actually worked great like i that would be all i used like i think i think that's if you're a camera maker out there i think that's where you need to be investing your money if you want to be like if if you're 
looking into making cameras and you want to be the next Canon or Sony, like that, that's, that's like your, that's the white whale. Mm. That's your foot in the door to being like, bam, you're now the Apple of cameras. Yeah. And dude, Fuji could do it. Fuji could definitely do it. They have the name, they have the color, they have the look. They could definitely do it. I don't know. Maybe it is Any good. I, I, I haven't really used their, their Bluetooth app. So who it. knows? Yeah, I doubt it too. <laughs> it's just one of those things where just like, it, whoever does that, like, just please, I will give you all my money. Yeah, I'd buy your camera right now. And they all have to be fucking flip up or at least flip out to the side. They gotta, you gotta have the flip out camera. I'm not buying cameras that don't have them anymore. Stupid. Literally, a hi- you're just not putting a hinge on your st- screen. That's the only difference. You fucking vlogger. <laughs> all right. Tesla batteries contain Cuban cobalt, likely illegal under U.S. sanctions. And, and then Ars Technica has this picture of this, this freaking cobalt digger. <laughs> that looks like a terrible job, dude. Yeah. Dude, we are very lucky to be fat white dudes in america <laughs> you know what i mean oh i feel yeah. like this dude is going into a hole to dig cobalt fuck that he's they say here they're paid on average two dollars a day oh i feel bad for him all right panasonic the exclusive supplier of batteries to tesla has decided to halt buying cobalt from canadian company after reuters raised questions about its provenance Cobalt is a crucial element in the manufacture of lithium-ion batteries, which are found in Tesla cars, amongst other consumer electronics. So they're just kind of, they're kind of lithium-ion. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why they're they're calling out Tesla here, but I guess because it has a lot of batteries in it. I don't know. Well, it, yeah. I guess you just put Tesla in the name and, it, and you get clicks, right? That's got to be a reason why. Yeah, I think it's partially that, but it's also like. I could see it depends who, like they're the exclusive supplier to Tesla. How, but oh, Panasonic yeah. by themselves isn't, you know, Samsung also makes batteries. You know, there's a lot of other companies that make batteries. Mm, right, right, right. Uh, despite a recent thaw in U.S. Cuba relations, the embargo remains in place. So most transactions between the U.S. and Cuba contain, continue to be prohibited. I mean, this is what, this is the, this is what you got to deal with when you have, you know, imperialism. The U.S. is imperialism. I mean, it sucks, but th- like this, like they're going to rely on the money from the cobalt. You know what I mean? And you take that away from them and you're just fucking putting these people in the hole. So do you feed them? Do you continue the fucking Congo cobalt mining industry, which probably sucks? Or do you just say, you know what, our ethics are, we don't, we, I don't know, it's tricky. Especially with the embargo. I mean, it's like, you want to put certain embargoes in place because you don't agree with the way certain governments do things. But at the same time, it's easy to say that as an American. Yeah. And then it doesn't help when half of the other countries are also on, like, Cold War status. Yeah. Yep. Um, CEO Elon Musk has previously has said previously that the company only uses less than 3% cobalt at present and plans to phase it out. So at least they, I mean, that's probably just a business move to phase yeah. out cobalt, but it's not like it's cheap. Right. Yeah. They probably don't want it. They probably don't want the cobalt anyway. So, all right. And here at our Technica, student engineers build a Hyperloop test pods with commercial class top speeds. Though only two pods got vacuum tube time, lots of impressive pods were on display. So I've seen this before. I think Vice did a piece on it, like the Hyperloop contest thing. And uh, basically a bunch of engineer students try to create the fastest Hyperloop. And I th- dude, I still think it's cool. Because a bunch of kids like college kids made one that goes 284 miles per hour top speed of 290 like that's insane to me yeah it's awesome the war yeah pods had to be self-propelled no pusher vehicle to get them started per a test in january so they they just sit and they just go and they start moving 
They had to brake safely with no crashing. The objective of the competition was speed. Previous comp competitions have awarded design, innovation, levitation, and other attributes. So this was the speed award. Speed has been a limiting factor for commercial Hyperloop companies too. One startup, Virgin Hyperloop One, has built a test track similar to Tesla's in the Nevada desert. The fastest time the company has made public has been 194. Last August, War won SpaceX's second test track competition with a speed of a little over 200. And now they're almost breaking 300. <laughs> Woo. Let's go, War. Damn, just keep it going. And we were talking before, this is a great way to fucking figure out some problems that you're having, figure out, you know, recruiting yeah, you know, some of the smartest people. The it's like, hey, guys, come, uh, come to our contest. We'll give you some money and maybe a job application. Yep. <laughs> and you know they would love it working for Elon. The idea of a Hyperloop, a form of mass transit that would push levitating pods through a low-pressure tube at speeds of 760 miles an hour, was made popular by Tesla, SpaceX, and Boring Company CEO Elon Musk. We know what Hyperloop is. We know who C Elon Musk is. Um, here's some of the images of these of these things. The scuba tanks on either side. This is, uh, what did that say? The scuba tanks on either side of Texas Guadalupe's pod were pumped to 4,500 PSI. So this looks like it's propelled by pressure. It's a bearing that they use, an air bearing. Oh, man, this one looks so dope. The Valentina pod. It's really cool. Some yeah. smart motherfuckers out there. Yeah. That's dope. That's really cool. The one the one that's just like got a wheel like it's got like a motorcycle engine and wheel on it. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's just to power it. <laughs> that's so dope. All right. Moving on to the big topic of the I recently week. put a the MacBook Pro fiasco. So I've made a video on this last week. Uh sort of coming out i have my own conspiracy theories but they've since yeah, been debunked conspiracy theories that's for sure <laughs> they've since been debunked so far uh i don't know if i could say debunked but um sure well we'll get into that but so the way this story kind of broke dave lee who's a well-respected youtube tech reviewer mainly does laptops everyone's waiting for his macbook pro 15 review he got the Core i9 version, and he just dropped a video a couple weeks before that talking about how much he's starting to hate Apple, blah, 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 how they're stagnating, and then they drop this. So everyone's like, all right, awesome. Apple's back in the game. They got us the Coffee Lake Hexacord chips. Let's go. Let's see it. Let's hear the reviews. Dave Lee gets it, tests it, immediately finds that it's throttling, and throttling so bad that it can't even maintain its base clock under load. So the average clock on load was 2.2 gigahertz, Apple has it on their website as a rated 2.9 gigahertz chip, which should boost up to like 4.9 or some bullshit. Yeah, um, never going to happen. Yeah, no. Um, now, the problem that seemed to be is obviously thermals, right? It's just, it's just too hot of a chip. And this is not the only laptop that has had issues with the i9. Um, well, no, because the i9's... The i9 is a marketing ploy. That's all it is. Because the i9 is a 45 watt TDP chip, which is what used to be their HQ series. That was like the higher series made for desktop replacements. Yeah. That's all this thing is. Which, I mean, it's still a six core beast, but it is it is a desktop level part meant for, you know, seven pound desktop replacement laptops. Yeah. And they kept it as a 45 watt TDP. So they yeah. branded it as a VHQ version, which meant it can go into laptops as long as you reach that 45 watt TDP. You get rid of those 45 watts efficiently. You should be able to cool it enough for it to work. It'll run hot, but that's what Intel rated it as 45 watts. Now, which is insane for a laptop. Yeah, it's insane for that chip. It's insane for that chip. It's insane for the chip, but that's it's, yeah, like it's. This they were they were I rating don't, I don't get these laptops like at all. And like not it's not just the Apple ones, it's like the Windows ones too. It's like for me it's just like why your my my desktop parts a 65 watt desktop part. You know, most common laptop parts are like 
15 watts max yeah and now we have a 45 watt part you're going to try to put in an ultra book have fun right and when you hear 45 watts that's still relatively low but then there was tests on on the subreddit the chip is like a hundred watt tdp rated chip like it's a hot fucking chip and there's just no way that apple's tiny ass thin aluminum unibody construction with its quiet ass tiny ass fans is going to be able to cool it properly and it's proven here because when he puts it into the freezer the performance just jumps up extremely high um like you said like like you said it still is a six core beast you're still going to get six cores at least running at 2.2 at least for now until we talk about the next step here but this just spread like wildfire there was just so much there was just so much controversy around apple releasing this chip in their basically unchanged chassis saying you know they shouldn't have they shouldn't have done that uh haven't they tested the the haven't they tested the chip didn't they know that this was going to happen and you know all those questions pop up and you wonder it's like Apple, of course, tested the chip. I mean, they have one of the strongest QC departments in the world. How the fuck did this get past them? How the fuck were they able to figure out... How the fuck were, how the fuck were they able to put this together and sell us at this price? Um, and then there was a couple other... There was a couple other uh, benchmarks that were getting released. One, most notably by Jonathan Morris... And he's, his video, Everyone is Wrong About the i9 MacBook Pro, basically talks about that the i9 chip isn't exactly what everyone's claiming it to be. So basically what he showed was all of the benchmarks that he did in terms of time that it takes the i9 to complete a render job. So he did things like Adobe, he did the, or, uh, Lightroom, Photoshop, Blender, Cinebench, all these other tests. He didn't just do a Premiere Pro test, which we know Premiere Pro isn't as optimized as it should be on Mac. It just runs better on PC, especially when you can get an NVIDIA GPU in there. It's just meant to run on GPU power. It's so much faster that way. Um, and also, most notably, when he runs the pre, uh, the, when Jonathan runs the Final Cut Pro tests, I mean, you could just see how much faster Final Cut is. So with the i9 version, or I, sh- I should say, with the last, with the, this year's i7 at 2.2 gigahertz, it's you're still exporting a 4K video that's around four minutes long and half the time. And with the i9 version, you're doing it even less time. You know, it's still around half the time, but it's a little less than than the other one. So. When you have apps that are optimized for Mac, you can see that it does run pretty well. Like, it is a pretty badass chip. Oh, my mouth is, like, really hurting. Um, and I think that's, that's one of the biggest takeaways that I've seen here was that it was a little bit disingenuous to just show the Premiere Pro score, which we already know isn't exactly optimized for the Mac machine. I mean, if you look at Dave Lee's benchmarks here with the Aero 15X, I mean, it took him eight minutes to render out a five minute clip where it took, you know, more than a half an hour to render on, on Mac. So what happened was behind the scenes, Dave Lee and Jonathan were contacted by Apple and contacted by Adobe to figure out what the fuck's going on here. And essentially Apple just released a firmware update that should essentially fix a lot of the thermal throttling issues that were happening with Mac, especially on Premiere Pro, which I'm assuming they're going to release an Adobe update as well, which should help it as well. And there was a there was an image, let me find it, by Dave Lee on his Twitter, where he shows that it's running pretty much at a stable base clock under load uh, during an export. Yeah, base clock. It that's that's my part of my problem. And it's it's to deal with why I, I don't get why they, they chose this chip. Well, this um, is what I think. Like it's 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 it the um the firmware update obviously is helping it not be uh, throttled. It's still running at like it, I think it said it was an average of ninety two degrees Celsius and it was still hitting a hundred. And I watched uh yeah you know Linus Tech Tips he. He decided to do a live stream as a joke. He literally had had it in a closed box. It took him 20 minutes to open the box, sign up into an account, 
and to have it hit 100 degrees Celsius. If honestly, that's to be, insane. To be fair, too, he had no idea what the fuck he was doing. Yeah. So it probably like was, would have taken him five minutes if he, yeah. knew what he was doing. Like, and that that's like, yeah, that's including the 12 minutes it took him to actually find an app to like see what the thermals even were. Yeah. Yeah, it gets hot. It definitely gets hot. Well, that's, and that's, that's my issue basically. And I don't get why they chose a 45 watt TDP chip that can go up to a hundred, especially, well, some of those a hundreds were off of, uh, the graphics, the graphics version, like the AMD Vega thing. So that is adding also another extra 50 Watts of graphics yeah, power runs on the, the same heat pipe. Right. So anytime but, um, like, like, cause with premiere, it's not just a CPU intensive thing. It runs both the GPU at hundred percent load as well as the CPU. So you're just adding all that heat in there. And that's why the, that, it's just not a very optimized, like, I mean, final cut. It's a desktop it's so fast. Like, yeah, like that that's my problem with it where it's like well yeah, uh Final Cut software optimized beautifully. Yeah. But like you can't you can do a lot with software optimization to make things a lot better. You can't fix a hundred degrees Celsius. No. And that's my that's my thing where it's like the it, the way Intel chips have always been rated is you have a three year warranty based off of the idea that it's it's max. It's like TJ Maxx is 100 or 100 degrees Celsius. Anything if you're going over that, they stop. They stop covering the warranty basically, because anything over that is well above their threshold for acceptable failure rates. So if you're running it at 100 degrees always, like, well, that's if you're export. It, it's under load. You're not going to be running it unless you're only exporting on it all day every day. Which See, you that's, that's be the doing. thing is, I don't, I don't, I don't know. It is now, but like at the same time, you know, that like where the first time it hit 100 degrees in that live stream was opening the app. It wasn't exporting. It was him opening Premiere. It hit 100. Yeah. Yeah. But that might have been, that might have been because of whatever. Well, here Apple says following extensive performance testing. I don't really know what this means. Maybe you can highlight it to me. Uh, following extensive performance testing under numerous workloads, we've identified that there's a missing digital key in the firmware that impacts the thermal management system and could drive clock speeds down under heavy thermal loads on the new MacBook Pro. A bug fix is, a bug fix is included in today's Mac OS High Sierra. Supplement update is recommended. We also apologize, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and they, they say you can expect 70% 70, uh, per, 70 faster performance from the new version. Right, with, that's, that's stopping, okay. But That's, then there was another thread on on the Apple subreddit where they pretty much found out there was a there was an issue with the VRMs. There was some sort of like bug, I guess, fun. going on with the VRMs, which was essentially that's power management. Then, yeah, yeah, it's essentially just registering whatever as faulty, and then just kind of, you know, that's why you had these fucking jagged ass lines. It just couldn't maintain anything. And then there were some tests where we saw that it was dropping down to 800 megahertz where the dude from Geekbench was saying, when you see that, when it drops down to 800 megahertz, that basically means the CPU is turning off. Like the CPU is yeah. not even running at that point. So there's something Usually wrong in this situation. How hot it is. <laughs> well, he was saying it was more of, there was, there was something like it, there was the, it was the way it would hand over the information to the GPU. Right. But what, okay. What they were, not what exactly they were trying sure to, what that means. What they were trying to do is they were, they were fixing the way it throttles and you can do that. And like, I'm expecting this to be a lot faster now. Like I'm expecting yeah. the throttle, the throttle limitations to be done because basically what it sounds like to me is the way most of those are designed is you have a, you have a cutoff that, Hey, if this thing thinks it's getting too hot, it's going to throttle itself and you can go in and tell it to not do that. And you can tell it to just run as fast as it will go. And it sounds kind of like that's, that's what the bug was is related to where that cutoff line is. So it sounds like they're trying to make it so, hey, dude, it's just going to run in, at full no matter how hot it gets, which is fine. But the, the thing that scares me with this is like, you can't, you can't run a CPU for 10 years at 100 degrees Celsius. No. You can run it for like maybe three. No, no. no. And after that, it's gone, dude. Yeah. So, like, if anyone's spending three grand, please realize, like, this is a three-year laptop. 
that's what's terrifying to me yeah like it's not even so much the speeds it's like no it's you just you can't run a chip at tj maxx for forever that's well, insane to me this is another thing too i don't know if many people know this if if you have a mac the first thing that you should be downloading is the mac fan control so essentially Macs never they they just rather be quiet for some reason Right. So you can go in, you can manually turn your fans up, especially on load. So the way I have my curves is when I export, those fans start cranking and they go up to like 90%. I don't go all the way to 100, go to 90%. And that's on the, the last year's version. And I'm assuming you do the same thing with this. One. I don't know if Dave Lee did that or not, but I'm assuming if you go in there and you do that, you could probably bring those temperatures down to uh, 87, 88. You know, those, those fans are that's... almost at half per, 50% of what they should be under load that would be, yeah that would that would get it, be getting better but like i i'd before i would tell anyone to buy this i would definitely want that to be tested yeah yeah we're, we're gonna need to see more testing hopefully they can release them soon because i'm interested if we yeah, can get an like i9 it's, like, it's that, a cool laptop i just for me it's just like you don't put in an you don't put that chip in an ultra book i know and that's kind of just wondering don't. that's kind of so what I was thinking Wait is for the iMac because it's that's all it's gonna be. What I was thinking is the reason they didn't change their their chassis this year is because they were probably waiting on that 10 nanometer chip to come in. You know what I mean? They were Which probably like as, as soon as that 10 nanometer chip, we're gonna just drop it in here, and now it's not here. So does Apple just stick with the old last year's chip and just say we're waiting for Intel's 10 nanometer chip, or do they have to put no, in a new chip? No, you just go with a regular coffee like upgrade that's already that's already pushing you to a quad core. But then you got, threat. then you got people like Dave Lee saying, you know, this is why I hate Apple. They never want to no, give us he the would top be, performance. He would be excited about if you just put a coffee lake chip in it. The current, the before this, it was still Skylake. Yeah. So no, if you just drop, if you dropped in a true quad core eight thread, I seven, which is what the eight, you know, the eighth gen coffee lake is, that's, that is still like a 15, 20% increase. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. It's it's you have all these Windows laptops getting dropped with six core. Everyone wants the six core Coffee Lake chip. They're in all the new Windows laptops. No, so they're they, only in the App really stupid ones that cost two that cost the same price as this. That I also don't recommend. Those are the only ones getting those insane i nines. Yeah, they're all like the you know the newer laptops that are coming out. The new XPS has an i nine in it. You know they have. That's what I'm saying. Do they compete on that level? And then you have people like Dave Lee. When did that happen? What? An XPS getting an i9. Yeah, it's got the i9s in there. Mm, coming later. It's not out yet. I'm pretty sure it's out. Might be. I'm, I'm almost 100% positive. Which, that's so stupid. And so well, that's, that's what happens when you have Intel telling people that these chips are rated 45 watts. Of TDP, they think okay, it's only forty-five watts TDP. We can handle that. We can I mean, ride that line as as thin as we can, but that's what people want. They want that performance. Otherwise, you're gonna have Dave Lee on your ass saying, "I hate Apple." I just done a a June launch of the regular quad core part, which you can get, but in the thirteen inch version. Yeah, you can you can get that, and that's the one I'd recommend. <laughs> yeah, thirteen inch the thirteen inch versions are fucking dope too. It's such a great form factor. For me, it's just more just like I I don't get why everyone's choosing. I don't get it either. It's, there it's, seems it's, to be it's fine. like, and it's one of those things where like this this chip is fine if you put it in a seven pound laptop. Exactly, and that's kind of one of the other videos that Dave Lee did. He was like, he showed off the Acer Helios or whatever, and he's like, this actually runs the i nine great, dude. The laptop is that thick. Yeah, you know and what that, I mean, and it looks what, like that's shit. What this that's what this chip line has always been for. That's what the HQ series has always been for. It's for desktop replacement bricks. Yeah. And it's that's what's more confusing to me is that everyone and their mother, I guess, is now saying like, yeah, we're going to put a 45 watt TDP into our freaking Ultrabook. Yeah. That, that does not compute to me, I guess. Like, and I mean, especially like Apple that's what I don't get why they're the ones doing it when this also these are their first laptops with DDR4 RAM because DDR4 was too hot. Yeah. And then you put a 45. Yeah. 
and then they uh, like, and then they increased the you, you true you you kept using ddr3 because ddr4 is like two or three watts hotter like it's not like a huge difference but now you're gonna jump from a 15 watt cpu to a 45 watt and keep the same chassis yeah but you're thinking you're thinking logically you know what i mean i, I, I mean <laughs> so if you follow like the apple subreddit they want the hottest fuck they also want apple granted they want apple to to build them a thicker laptop they don't want apple to most most apple consumers who want pro level laptops they don't need the thinnest fucking laptop but i also think that that is what why you buy apple you want a thin nice looking light pc or laptop so they're at this weird crossroads right now. I guarantee you they wanted to put that 10 millimeter chip in there. They couldn't. Now they're like, okay, we're an entire generation behind. Do we drop in two, two three. generations, two generations, two, two. Yeah. So the, yeah. Cause they, there was KB Lake and then the coffee Lake. So they're two generations behind. Do we drop in the coffee Lake I nines that everyone fucking wants? It's going to run hot, whatever. We'll throw them in there. We'll get people all upset at Intel because Intel doesn't know how to optimize their shit. They're giving us bad TDP ratings, and we'll wait until you know we drop our ARM chips. This is my conspiracy theory, by the way. I know. And then once we drop our ARM chips and we optimize the fuck out of it, and it runs at fucking 10 watts of TDP, but it still gives you that great performance, like what they did with the A11 Bionic and the iPhone, then everyone's going to go crazy, and it's still going to be thin as a razor. And yeah, I think, see, that's, I think, I think, that's, think that's, that's what they're doing, man. I think that's why they decided to throw these big, hot-ass chips in these laptops. I mean, okay. It makes sense. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. They hey, can't gonna, not, they can't make, not put in a new a, chip. We're going to make a really shitty product and commit suicide on this entire product launch just to prove a point. No, they didn't. From the, from the, company, from the company who has always been... I mean, we're, we're talking about Apple. We are talking about the companies like, fuck you. You don't need a USB-A port. Here's four USB-Cs. No, no, they would just do it. I don't they think don't, they... they don't need a reason of like, fuck Intel. They would just do it. No, I don't think that. I don't think they were committing suicide with this. I mean, they they, they released the if the but if this bu, this thermal bug didn't happen, it would still be that these laptops are maintaining boost clock, right? If they just released it the way that they were supposed to work. So it's like, all right, you're getting a you're getting a hexacore chip that at least runs at boost. That's fine, but it's running base. hot as fuck. Base. Right? That would be the this only. This thing won't boost. This is just base. Yeah, yeah, base. That would be the only reason. That would be the only critique that people would have is like, damn, my laptop's getting up to what is that, 50 degrees Celsius? 100. It's, it's getting pretty hot. Or 100 degrees Celsius. So Which you're is 212 or 13 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, it's getting pretty hot. So then it's like, I, they can't, they they have to put it in there. They can't not put it in there. Otherwise, they're going to wait a year, you know, another year. Who knows how long until their arm chips are done. I guarantee you they're going to fucking hope, hopefully get them done by next year. I mean, they have yeah. to put them in. They have to. I don't think they, they have they no choice. No, I think they should have just went with regular Coffee Lake in June. That was a choice. Like, they could have just gone, no, here's a true quad-core part with eight threads, which is more than you've ever had. And there's already a huge performance upcrease, increase, but it's a 15-watt part. That was totally a choice that could have been made. Yeah, but they have those too. They did put those in. Now, they should have just launched those and just say that's it, because that's what makes sense. Because Apple has always been, while, while you're right, they've tried to make the best, they really haven't. They've mostly tried to just make what makes the most amount of sense. You've never bought an Apple product because it was the biggest, best performer in the world. Or the newest. Yeah, but do you, do you understand what I'm trying to get at? Yeah, like, I, no, I do. I do get the, the pressure from the community entirely. But like... If they didn't release it with the Hexacore chips and then you have the XPS getting released with the Hexacore chip... You would have it would have been all over the news. Apple the Apple gives us quad core. They don't they never cater to professionals. That's the criticism we always hear from Apple. So I think that they were like, look, we'll throw it in there. It's gonna be hot as fuck. You're probably not gonna like it. You're not gonna get the most performance out of it. And you're gonna just die when we drop our arm chips. 
I mean, yeah, I can see that. It's just still like it's such a stupid shit. <laughs> I tell you what, it makes the the it's razor not, like, it makes the razor blade a lot more compelling for me. I just yeah, I just don't get it personally, but I also don't. I, I I'm just biased against that shit because I think it's stupid. Well, it's not that it's even a stupid chip. It's just the way a lot of people are trying to use it's really stupid. And it's also the i9 branding just pisses me off. There's nothing about this that's an i9. It's an upgraded i7. Just binned higher. Yeah. But that, that's all it or is. Or the i7 maybe just been lower. It's just, it's just the HQ series of parts that have always existed. And yeah. now we're going to call it i9 as a buzz, for, like buzz phrase. Mm -hmm. and that's why people are thinking they can put them into laptops that they can't and they did dude the, the, there was a thread on the XPS and the XPS um, reddit and that sounds even worse because that thing's even thinner they're getting so hot they're shutting down yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not surprised they're still dealing with coil wine on like, XPS it's insane like, and I tell you what, Razer has that fucking dope ass vapor chamber cooler on it, and it works. But guess what? They didn't put an i9 in there. They put the hex core i7 in there. They probably yeah. were like, "This is just way too hot. You're gonna be gaming on this all the time. You're gonna be using it all the time at 100% load. Let's make sure that we can reach the temps that we need." And that's why I'm looking at the Razer laptop. I'm like, "It's around the same price. It's thin, aluminum unibody chassis." Damn, and it runs OBS real smooth. Like, yeah, like the HQ series is basically what's always been in like the Mac Mini and IMAX. Like that's what that's what this part is actually meant for. If the IMA if the if the Mac Mini comes out with a i9, are you getting it? Probably not. I mean that, honest, that dude, actually sounds really product. interesting to me. It sounds cool, but I'm going to do the same thing I always do with all Apple products, especially if it's first gen by the like base. That's it. Yeah. If that comes out as base, I'll be super stoked, but no, I'm probably just going to buy the i5 base or whatever. I'll probably have... It'll, hmm. Maybe we'll have an i5 as base. I'm not exactly sure how they would do it. Usually they drop two chips, the i7 and the i9, at least on most products. Yeah, it's usually they, not they, five i seven. Yeah, and then with the thirteen, it's just i five. I don't know the Mac. They, that's the next story that we have here, which is the Apple rumors. And the thirteens so, are sick. I, honestly, no, they're amazing. You, they're if amazing. you want to, if you want to buy an i or a MacBook, go buy the thirteen. The only oh, reason oh. I don't recommend them to everyone is because there's only in, integrated graphics on them. And that's the, true. The graphics card really does help. As shitty as it is, the fucking 560X or some bullshit that's in it which now. Which is the same as the 555, which is the same as the 550, which is the same <laughs> as the 450. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're not that good, but it's way better than integrated fucking graphics. So if you're doing anything where you need like visuals, then the 15, you got to go 15 inch. To be honest, I don't know. Wait till the benchmarks for the i9 come out. Then make your decision. If you're only keep lap like I don't I don't keep laptops more than three years. So a nine nine, if it lasts if it's running hot, I'm only keeping it three years anyway. I have no problem with it. That's I mean, your cross I, to bear. Yeah, I think that's that's someone's choice. For me, it's just hard to recommend a three thousand dollar product that's probably gonna fail in three years. Yeah. Also it's you gotta, same, you gotta think too. I'm, it's the same thing why I'm waiting on the like the keyboards i want to like it looks like they have done good things to change the keyboards but well they really only I, added i want to see, see in a year if this like little silicon gel actually worked yeah the, it looks like they keyboard. only added a fucking piece of plastic on there but <laughs> yeah <laughs> they didn't really change much like, i've never had a problem i love the fucking keyboard i might be the only one in the world i think their keyboards are the best but that's me i like that I mean, fucking i feel like you're just like clacking away Oh, and I'm fine with that. That's a subjective thing. The thing, like, I... Yeah, it is. For me, it's one of those things where it's like, I, I can't in good conscience, like, say, hey, you should buy a $3,000 product that has a really high rate of failure. Yeah. Which I never thought I'd say about Apple. 
but that's true for any of them. It's like, tough. That's, that's what's so crazy about it to me. It's tough, dude. Like, I mean, I would. I don't get why this chip exists. The only thing I haven't heard really any negative press on is the fucking Razor Blade 15, dude. That 2018 Razor Blade. It's getting more and more compelling every day. All right, here we go. Ming Chi Ku. Ming Chi Ku. I was going to say that, but be careful with Razor because they've also had their own chair of durability issues in the past. They have, and that's why I've been a little wor worrisome about this one, but I haven't seen anything yet. It does get hot from time to time, but it seems to be certain, certain, I don't know, people who don't know how to use laptops are fucking up. But Ming Chi Ku released this uh, some leaks basically saying Apple is playing on an 11-inch iPad Pro Mac Mini update 1.57 yes. and 1.78 inch Apple Watch and then finally the Air Power coming this fall he already talked about the MacBook Pro getting upgrades we already saw that uh, iMac getting a quote unquote significant display performance upgrade which to me is super compelling AK okay, uh, they're gonna put a 9.9 in it Just, <laughs> I don't mind no that's that's what I'm saying is that's where that chip belongs. Yeah, I don't that's mind. That's where it makes a ton of sense. Not in an Ultrabook. But at the, the display performance upgrade, I'm thinking they're going to do ProMotion, which is the 120 hertz display. That would be cool. That would be, be real dope. Because they're, they are lacking there. Yeah. If they give me a 5K monitor with 120 hertz refresh, the DCP color gamut, you know, Apple does color the best, then and that's super compelling as someone who does a lot of graphical work. And then um, finally, Mac Mini update, well, which would be the only thing. I'm, well. The only thing I would be worried with that is like, I really hope AMD comes out with those rumored uh, new Vega cards for that, because that's that's a lot to run. Yeah, that's a lot of pixels to push. Yeah, maybe that's what they're waiting for. I don't know. Who knows? Dude, just go with Nvidia. Come on, what are you doing? Stop with this AMD. Anyways, iPad Pro with Face ID. They're probably getting rid of all the bezels. It's going to look sick. I can't wait to get one. It's probably my favorite fucking Mac product that I own. Or Apple products, or whatever. Cool. Yeah. Um, new iPhone. So we're going to get an OLED model, a 5.8-inch OLED model, 6.5-inch OLED model, and then the 6.1-inch LCD model. We already talked about this. And I'm uh, stoked on the budget one. Yep. Then we're going to get an update to the Mac Mini, which would be sick. Yes. Thank God. Thank you, Jesus. I've only been waiting since we started this show three years ago or whatever. <laughs> There's two ways they can go with the Mac Mini. They could go the Intel NUC way, keeping it as super small as possible, throwing in the, the, you know, the dual Vega Intel thing in there, which would be sick. Or be they sick, can go yeah. just a little bit like their last version, pretty thick but small still. Uh, and then just pack it with a bunch of shit that you can upgrade. Hopefully. Dude, Hopefully even if it, even if it's not upgradable, just like that's all I've that's all I've wanted is a fucking computer. Yeah. Not yeah, we, an all in one, not some crazy laptop. I just want a goddamn computer. We haven't heard anything about a Mac Pro yet. We know they've been working on it, but we don't we he didn't leak anything about a Mac Pro. Uh there's also going to be a new low price notebook that Ku now believes may not be called MacBook Air. So what people are thinking is the new one, that's, the new low price one that comes out is going to be called the MacBook. We can get rid and of the MacBook could, Air. That could be that could be cool too because the MacBook Air, as much as I love it, that's been in need of an update just as long as the Mac Mini. Yeah. Both yeah. of those are still using fourth gen, third gen. No, no. Uh, Mac Mini is still using fourth gen Intel parts, and MacBook Air still is using fifth gen. Every time they've updated it, they've actually only pushed it up 200 megahertz, and that's their update. <laughs> yep. From 1.6 to 1 1.8. I Broadway. can't believe they're still There's selling. Your that's your update. They're still selling the Mac Mini at $1,000. Yeah. That's insane. For 7th Gen Haswell. That's for anyone see. you can't make it out, but there's a computer behind me. That's sitting there doing nothing. That's what those. That's what I think of those parts in this day and age. <laughs> sitting there, not unplugged, not doing anything. It's insane to me. I hope that it's getting all getting updated. MacBook Air. I'm interested in seeing that as well, because this is, this is another scenario that I could essentially go to. I do get the i7 or the i9, 
MacBook Pro, depending on these benchmarks. And then I get rid of the 13 inch and I get myself the MacBook Air as like the website running thing, which would be cool. Or I don't get that and then I just get the new iPad Pro, which is probably what I will do because I love the iPad Pro. So we're getting a bunch of stuff I'd from Apple. If, if I were you, buy, an iP- buy the new iPad Pro and an iMac. Yeah, I have the iMac, the 5K iMac. It's pretty nice, but... If they fix the bezels, I will definitely consider an iMac instead of a Mac Mini. Oh, that's the other thing, too. When they say significant display update, that's probably what they If it doesn't have mean. an inch and a half bezels on it anymore, I'd be very excited. Yeah. So that's what kills me. But I, like, uh, at work, I use a 2017, beast of a 2017 iMac, and I hate it. And it's mostly just because I've gotten so used to everything in my life having no bezels. Yeah, those bezels are nuts. They are nuts. Hopefully they get rid of them. But it's going to be pretty interesting when Apple comes out with this September. I am interested. I want to see the direction they're going in. This might. Hopefully this is the last generation we see of this sort of era of MacBook. And then we start getting into their shit. Hopefully. But we shall see. All I right. mean, it's a love-hate with that. I'm interested, but it, I'm very interested as a bystander to see how the switch to ARM goes. Me too. But I could totally see it flopping. I can see it totally working, and I can totally see it. We're back to the 90s and powered PC. I could see it. I, if anyone can do it, it's Apple, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. If anyone like, can I, do I it, have, I have more faith that they'll actually do it. It's just still, it's going to be... It's going to be a lot of fun watching it. Yeah. But I would not be on the... Unless I needed to for work, I would not be buying a first gen. I'll put it that way. Yeah. I mean, it all depends on those benchmarks, really, and how well Marzipan is optimized and how I well... Say less benchmarks, more like what's what's optimized to run on ARM. Right. We like, know they're gearing up for it. So hopefully... I mean... Oh, man, it would be so dope if they could actually pull it off the way it needs to be done. Because they can't go full ARM. They can't go full mobile, I should say. Full iOS. It's got to be Mac. Right. And, I mean, look, like, they can do it, but that's why I'm saying it's going to be... I want to buy it first gen just because, like... Well, I'm probably going to have to because of work, but I don't want to. For myself, personally, I want to buy, buy one. Because yeah. so you know that first year is going to be... You know, it's going to be me working my ass off trying to actually make sure there's apps that are, like, optimized for it. Yeah. Because you're going to go into a world where you're, like, half of your apps are going to be borderline useless. Yeah. Until they they get fixed. Which will be fun. Yeah, I'm excited to see it. All right. Let's end this show. My fucking mouth is killing me. We had a few more stories, but we're going to skip them because I can't fucking keep my mouth open much for longer. I got to go rinse it. All right. So we'll catch you guys next week. No gaming this week. Um, Doobie, hopefully he does an Octopath review. I've been hearing some conflicting reports about the game. I haven't gotten it yet. I don't think I'm going to. I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> I don't Spoiler think alert. Going. Nope. <laughs> All right. Catch you all later. Hit up our website. Make sure you follow us on Twitter, Instagram. We'll catch you. Peace. Peace, peace, peace.